can tell you that there's levels to this niche perfumery game. This is about as niche and niche can get. This is a niche perfume catering to a very niche audience and might be slightly taboo to some people. Now for me, kind of hits home and for a lot of Latinos and South Americans, including Brasileiros and African descent, this is tapping into something that you may have heard of as a child. Something that I generally don't speak about on this channel and I'm not gonna go into in depth here, but it's tapping into a space of magic, mysticism, and santeria. Taboo city. Now we're not gonna have any religious conversations here, that's not what this channel is about, but I'm just stating that this fragrance is niche for a niche audience, hated around that world of mysticism, magic, and embracing some ancestral roots that some of us may have. So when Empiria Fragrances reached out and they were like, would you be interested to check out this particular fragrance? And I saw the name, I was like, yeah, I would. So let's roll my music so we can check out Chango 6. Let's get weird. Welcome to the YouTube channel that will make you laugh more than a gaggle of unicorns mating in the Serengeti. His wealth of knowledge will make the most astute astrophysicist question. His life decisions, led by his spiritual advisors, Chuck Norris and Walter Mercado, I present to you, Mr. Kind of a Big Deal. Kind of a Big Deal. Blessing morning, my beautiful peoples. You know who it is. It's your boy, C to the U to the B to the A. Shout out to Imperial Fragrances for sending me this fragrance for review and sponsoring today's video, because this was an experience. Now, I've never thought that I would review a fragrance with an Orisha name like Chango. And for anyone interested about all Orishas and mysticism about them, Google it if you're truly interested, because this is a channel about entertainment and fragrances. But just to give you a little bit of an idea or backstory of why this fragrance particularly caught my attention, being a first generation Cuban, and this being a big part of our culture. So Chango in itself is known as the god of thunder and light. In the Orisha space, the Yorubas believed that Chango was immortal, super powerful, and eternally youthful. So with that, Imperial Fragrance is releasing a fragrance called Chango 6. Definitely caught my attention because these are names that you knew growing up, that you knew were part of a certain religion and mysticism surrounding the Latino community, not just Cubans, but Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, again, Brazilians, Africans, so on and so forth. Which which is frowned upon by a lot of communities and think and feel however you want to feel, but this is about a particular fragrance and why it caught my attention. Now, here is the scent profile of the fragrance. Opening up at Red Apple and Bamboo, which already was like super unusual. The Red Apple notes, we've smelled it in a couple of niche fragrances. It does spark an interest, but Bamboo is not something that I personally recall smelling in a fragrance other than like Killian's Bamboo Harmony. Then it's followed by Clove, African Bird's Eye Pepper, and Amber and Leather. So all the notes seemed fire. So once once I got the presentation, here's what the box came in that it looked like. Very Amazonian, rich in birds. The colors are very significant and pronounced. Also came in with Chango's colors, white and gold. And coincidentally, his feast day in the religion was December 4th, so a couple of days ago. So it only felt right to smell this fragrance, give it my true first impression slash first wear. So let's jump into smelling Chango 6 from Imperial Fragrances. It seems that they have a lot of fragrances revolving around this mystique and spiritualism, right? Which is something completely niche, right? I mean, as a niche fragrance, you should be as niche as possible. But red apple and bamboo, let's see if I get that kind of oricha type energy. There's a lot going on here. I can tell you right now, the sillage cloud is intense. Wow. Very green, rich, sweet. There is a very fresh component off here, but I also get this jungle-ish, Amazonian, herbal, woody, green essence out of this fragrance, which is very captivating and quite unusual. But on the other note, there's a safeness about this fragrance that really isn't offensive. I would have expected a little bit darker and more abrasive and very powerful and possibly overbearing. And the sillage kind of takes over that, but the notes don't. It isn't something that's choking you out, nor is it something that even seems offensive. Now what isn't mentioned here on the notes that does spark up a, a brightness is a sour grapefruit, almost pink grapefruit essence here that really provides a lot of vibrancy in life. There's a citrus component here that isn't listed in the notes that is very eye-opening, but it's also a little bit lemon pledge-ish. I gotta try this joint on skin to see what type of energy and vibe this is on. I love the color red and gold. It really speaks to the whole oricha type vibe, but this fragrance is definitely not slacking on sillage as it's everywhere. There is a massive cloud around here, but it isn't choking me out, which is a plus. Oof, 
All right, so on the skin, the clove, the spice is really popping up. You still get that pink grapefruit kind of essence. A lot of green, wood, herbal, jungle-ish kind of vibes. There's depth in body here, but a lot of freshness on top. This is a very rich, alluring fragrance that has a lot of substance and beasty power, but it isn't oody stank, crusty B.O., or it doesn't have any elements of like heavy Middle Eastern spiciness, which is kind of a breath of fresh air because that's a lot of brands what they're leaning towards. But this kind of strays away from that. It keeps that woody essence with a lot of spice, but a lot of bright, invigorating energy and life about this scent. So you can clearly tell that the brand is really trying to give you an experience. There has to be a story followed by a fragrance, and they're really trying to portray that in this scent. So much so that with the other fragrances in their lineup, I can pretty much imagine that everything is gonna kind of line up and coincide with each other, making it some sort of a cohesion lineup. At least that's what I feel it is. I can't confirm or deny, but that's the kind of sensation that I'm getting from it. So overall, you're getting the red apple, but it's more of a sweetness. There's a ruby red, pink grapefruit kind of essence here that's adding a lot of life, a lot of brightness, a lot of energy. And the sillage of the scent is very like Chango, powerful, dominating, loud, just all up in your face. But on the skin, you get a heavy pepper, you get a lot of jungly green, woody essences, and a lot of rich, nature-ish energy. A very beautiful fragrance, a very mystical fragrance I can see based on the story and the scent, the type of vibe and energy that they were going for. This is, again, a very niche type fragrance, but they also offer samples on the website, they're like 2ML samples. So if this is something that speaks to your particular niche space, try it out and see what kind of energy you get off of it. I think it's a very special fragrance, and I like how they just strayed away from not only the context and the story behind the fragrance, but taking the risk of making a niche fragrance catered for a specific niche audience, which not many do. They want to do something niche, but for the masses. Very risky, and I respect it. What do you guys think of the note breakdown and the idea of having an Orisha-esque experience in a fragrance like Django? Shout out to Imperial Fragrances for sponsoring today's video. I'll put a link in the description if you guys are interested, and feel free to let me know your experiences, and if this is something that's a little bit too risky or controversial, or definitely a breath of fresh air. I'll see y'all stitches next time. You know who it is. Biggest in the game. Smooches. He don't play. Hey. For all the chicks that got dead in the penthouse, we don't talk on my mom's crib. Hey. It's long since you never get in. It's long since you would think that you would. <laughs>